Hey, I'm back. I'm sorry that my hiatus stretched so unexpectedly far. There wasn't a single thing that I could do about it, and I anguished over it quite severely. Luckily, I can finally return to Sekiro. We'll pick up exactly where we left off, on the Fireball Square before the gates to the inner castle. Today we will explore the Ashina Castle itself, along with some of the remaining items. We'll also look at a bit of character art and go through all the sculptor's idols and see how they were localized and what interesting bits we can derive from their original names. As usual, we'll quickly go over the disclaimers, legend, and sources. If it's not the first time around, feel free to skip ahead. Number one, use common sense. Please do not assume that I have access to some secret true knowledge. I'm just entertained by reading Sekiro in Japanese. My lore theories are just theories, so treat them accordingly. Number two, I am not a professional translator. I have never worked in localization. Yes, I will say that something is translated poorly and something is not, and it will be my personal point of view. Ultimately, my goal is to give you the information so you can see if the localization was good or not, whether something important was lost or not. My opinion is just that, and I choose to share it. I am not an expert on Buddhism or Shintoism. I will leave links to the religious terms that we will encounter so you can read more on your own if you're interested. As usual, the transcriptions I give do not follow all academic rules and I don't think it's necessary. They're just here to represent the pronunciation in case you're curious. All sources I used for this research will be listed in the description box below along with all the additional information that I referenced throughout the video so you can read more if you're interested. There you will also find a link to my original blog post if you want to read it through. Before we even reach the Ashina Castle Idol, we meet one of the most curious NPCs in the game, the old hag. We talked about her at length when we discussed the child of rejuvenating waters. In the art book, she is called Shinjin Bukakihito, a person of deep faith. She is pushing the child of rejuvenation storyline by pointing out the whereabouts of Serpent's Viscera. She also always faces Mount Kongo. My theory is that this lady is a version of Jijo Noroba, a lady's elderly maid. This character is present in the art book, but is nowhere to be seen in the game. It is an old lady in the temple clothing, holding a scepter version of the Buddhist Shakujo staff. I think this lady, or maybe there were several of them, was taking care of the child of rejuvenation in the Senpo temple, but as the temple got more and more corrupted, eventually went insane. She is knowledgeable about the child of rejuvenation, and most importantly, she knows where the child resides, because at the end of her storyline, you can find the rice lady dead before the gates to the sanctuary in the main temple. She also knows about the cradle to carry the dragon home, which is kind of a very special information restricted to the high monks of the Senpo temple. If you look at the lady's elderly maid's art and age it somewhat, it does look like a person of deep faith. Anyway, that's the theory I'm sticking to at the moment. Back to the lady. She tells Wolf about the holy person that lives on the Mount Congo, she means the divine child, and asks him to join her in prayer. Funnily enough, it's not just a figure of speech. You can actually pray near her using any items that prompt Wolf to pray, for example, a Mibu balloon. For each prayer, the rice lady would give you a little bit more dialogue and a reward, the biggest of which is divine confetti. Ashina Castle Idol is called Ashina Jo Honjo, Ashina Castle, Main Castle. The first part of the original sculptor's idol's names usually indicates a bigger area, and the second part specifies the exact location. On the stairs, there is a samurai general miniboss, Samurai Taisho Matsumoto Kuranosuke. The Matsumoto part of his name is clear, but to be honest, I'm not sure that the rest of the kanji can be read as Kuranosuke. However, I've spoken multiple times on difficulties of reading Japanese names, so we'll just move on. The art book has a couple of amazing spreads depicting the main part of the Ashina castle. It is enveloped in twilight and the gold elements stand out more prominently, and another one depicts the roofs of the castle already covered in snow. The spread with the roofs is called Tenshikaku Yanue, on the roofs of the castle tower. On the roofs we meet the incredible Naijar Shinobi who serve Ishin personally. We talked about them when we were discussing prosthetic arts. Sculptor developed the Nijar Slash and the Nijar Slash Reversal by watching them fight and adapting the heavy prosthetic to be the counterweight in this combat art, much like Nijars use their heavy shurikens as counterweights. Their Japanese name is Yotaka, which is a wordplay on the word Yotaka Nijar, the bird, and can be translated as approaching hawk. The art book calls them Yotakashu, Nijar people, to specify that it is a group or a clan. 
While we are on the topic of the Nye jar, let's talk about Nye jar beacon memo that you can get from Fujioka. I always got it way too late, but as far as I understand, you are supposed to explore the ground level of the castle before climbing up the roofs. Anyway, its original name is Yotako no Noroshi no Boegaki, Niger Beacon or Smoke Signal Memo. It says that these pale pink smoke signals are Mishishirube, path guides of the Niger. The last paragraph, however, though they seem to be the only ones able to follow these smoke signals. The original wording is somewhat more inviting with these three dots at the end and the daro part, which kind of expresses doubt and uncertainty. It teases you into following the smoke signals yourself and see what you can find, in contrast to the English localization that spent way more effort on the ashen-feathered flock than on preserving this little, open-ended trail of thought. As with all the other notes, memos and letters in the game, if you look closely at the item picture, you can see the subject matter depicted on it. Here it's the roofs of the Ashina castle and the thin trails of smoke. Upper tower antechamber idol is called Tenshu Jodan Musahaberi. Here we're introduced to a new area, which is Tenshu upper section. We discussed what the Tenshu is in the last video. It is a central tower or a main keep of a Japanese castle. We'll just call it Tenshu. Musahaberi is a very interesting word that does not mean antechamber, as you've probably guessed. Musa is a pretty standard word for warrior, and haberi, which uses a kanji for samurai, is an archaic word of the humble Kenjogo sword, which means to be or to humbly do. From what we are going to see next, I figure that this part of the castle is something like warrior's abode, or the place where Ashina warriors spend their time while not, you know, warrioring. Why do I think that? Well, mainly because this small part of the room behind the idol is called Chaya, a tea room or a place of rest. The next room is called Shomotsubushitsu, which directly translates to book club room. I think this is a library where the Ashina samurai would spend their time in more peaceful times. This part of the castle seems to be for the day-to-day -day activities that are not samurai training and Ashina arts practice. Oh, this is a funny little thing that proves that I was dumb and the localization was actually on point. This is a Biobu folding screen, we've seen these things before. Look at it a little closer. It's called Ryusengawatsu Biobu, a folding screen depicting a scene of the Dragon Spring River. So, a while back, when we discussed the Dragon Spring Sake, the localization, albeit inadvertently, because the line wasn't there in the original, was right. Dragon Spring is an actual water source, and it's the name of the river that flows along the Hirata Estate grounds. You can even see the familiar bridge. The Dragon Spring River is also depicted on the in-game map. Yes, I know, I also did not see it on my first playthrough. The kanji are kind of faded, but still readable. From the antechamber, we move straight to the Tenshu Kairo, which is the Tenshu hallway. Here we encounter the old lady that would raise alarm when she spots Wolf. She's not present in the art book, however, she has the same character model as the Shura narrator, although dressed in different colors. She's different from the old hag, Lady's elderly maid, and the sisters from the Fountainhead Palace. There is a whole bunch of different old ladies in Sekiro, so it's important to differentiate between them. The art book also depicts some decorative paintings on coffered ceiling. Here it is Phoenix's. The next room is called Ekken no Ma, audience room with someone superior. I think it's probably where Ishin would gather his samurai or maybe the Ashina elites. The scroll painting that turns out to be a secret room entrance is marked as Ekken no Ma Kakejiku, a hanging scroll from the audience room, which is kind of meh. I really wanted more context for this painting because I have no clue who this man on the horse is. He's holding a Buddhist shakuja staff in addition to a blade, and that is all I'm able to derive from this depiction. The art book also has the map of the Ashina castle and its grounds, about as comprehensible as the in-game map of Ashina lands. It's called Kuruvazu, Kuruva map. We discussed Kuruva in the previous video. It's an architectural term that refers to the walls of a Japanese castle and areas surrounded by those walls, like a ward or something along those lines. Anyway, the map is driving me crazy because I cannot read the writing and I don't think it was meant to be read, and these things always annoy me. You'll see later with the Okami scroll, there is like a wall of text, but I can't read a single thing and it just sends me into linguistic rage. There is also a depiction of a typical treasure chest that you can find in the Ashina castle, the Karabako. The Fusuma designs from the art book initially caught my attention. Fusuma is a Japanese sliding screen comprised of several panels that can be used as a door or sort of a wall to restructure the room. Fusuma from the Ashina castle depicts a sakura tree, 
And since in Sekiro all the Sakura trees are accounted for, I stared at it for a while. No, it is just an area appropriate for summer design. Moving on. Ashina Dojo is trickier than I thought. Its original name is Tenshu Jodan Ashinaryu Denjo. It is also a part of Tenshu Upper Section. The English localization called it a dojo, which is kind of the only option you have here. Dojo is a hall for martial arts training where students would gather and practice, conduct exams with their sensei, and do other related activities. This place, however, is called a denjo. The second kanji is that of dojo, but the first one is tsutawaru, to pass down, to transmit. So, Ashinaru Denjo is a place for passing down the way of Ashina. Since I could not find Denjo in any dictionary that I use, I have to assume it is a coined word, possibly because Ashina arts differ so much from the traditional martial arts practice in a dojo. Here we meet Ashina elite Jinsuke Sase. His original name is Ashinaru Sase Jinsuke, way of Ashina Jinsuke Sase or Sase. Genshiro also has this name pattern in his third phase or during our last encounter in the field of Silvergrass, Wave of Tomoe, Genshiro Ashina. The folding screen from this room depicting some area appropriate cranes and mountains is just Ashinaru Denjo Byobu, folding screen from the Wave of Ashina Denjo. In the back of the room, however, we find the most curious Kosen no Kakijiku, a hanging scroll of an ancient battle. This scroll depicts an Okami warrior descending from the skies enveloped in lightnings and dark clouds, and the warrior standing in water, a horrible idea, prepared to face her head-on. The scroll has some text on it, I can discern mostly hiragana, the kanji are too smudged for me to read if they're even meant to be read. This scroll is a tutorial for lightning reversal that is about to come in rather handy. It calls the Okami warriors Ayakashi, which is like a ghost, something of the apparition type, since Sekiro uses the apparition word when referring to enemies, it would be great to use this word here in the localized version. I think that maybe those Okami who swept over Ashina a long time ago were projections, much like the false monk is an apparition version of the true monk. The word lurked thus confuses us even more because it implies that these apparitions were present in the lands of Ashina, but were in some kind of hiding. The original just says Kitari, came, and on the scroll you can see an Okami warrior descending from the sky. As we climb up to the castle tower lookout, or Tenshu Boro, Tenshu Watchtower, we meet yet again Genshiro Ashina. But before we get to talk about him, let's look at the fourth prayer necklace and see what it has to say about Ashina elites. Yondo Nenju, fourth prayer necklace. The English localization skipped one line, possibly because they lacked the space on the card, the line goes like this. At the heart of the Ashina castle lies the way of Ashina Denjo. The description says that only Ashinaru no Tatsujin, experts in the way of Ashina, may set foot into this place, which kind of makes little sense considering this is the place that is supposed to be a training ground for these experts to pass down Ashina arts to their students. And you see the different types of Ashina samurai being at different levels of Ashina arts mastery. The majority of them know Ichimonji, some of them even know Ichimonji double, I think and Ashina elites wield all Ashina arts up to Ashina cross. I think it's more about the fact that regular samurai cannot enter the denjo unless the Ashina elite is in there and it's training time. The rest of the description is localized correctly, the only thing skipped is the two part. Sometimes Ishin too would visit unannounced. All the time people ask me what my favorite boss fight is, and it's this one. Sure, Kensei Ishin is way more of a spectacle, Lady Butterfly is way more of an enraging humiliation, and Priestess Yao on the Crimson Bridge is way more of a challenge, but it is here, on the Castle Tower Lookout, I really fell in love with the game. I am convinced that this Genshiro boss fight is the ultimate tutorial boss fight. Even if you defeated Lady Butterfly before him, as I do all the time, it's Genichiro that really teaches you how to play Sekiro. I love this boss fight not because of how great it is from a design standpoint or how beautiful it looks, but because of what significance it holds. Before Ginichiro, you were probably stumbling along the main quest, getting in occasional mikiris, being thrown off a cliff by ogres, dodging the fiery balls by sheer luck, and generally dying more than twice. For me, progressing Sekiro all the way up to Ginichiro felt like an accident. Yeah, I knew how to mikiri, how to dodge, I knew I was supposed to jump over a sweep attack, but I never really felt confident in any of that. Ginichiro made me confident. I would say Ginichiro has probably the most incredible design of all the characters that just gets better the further you progress in the game. 
His unique outfit combines Ashina armor with their Japanese iris on the chest and on the back, and their iris headpiece, which is the exact same one that Kensei Shin wears, with Okami color palette. He has the same light blue trousers as them. If you look closely, you'll see that Genshiro's battle look is kind of a mix between Gyobu and the Nokami warrior. He wields a katana sword and an Okami bow. The bow is very worn out, and if you look closely at the tip of the arrow that goes with it, you'll see that there is a five-petal sakura flower engraving on it. I think the bow and arrows belong to Tamoe and Ginichiro inherited it after her death. I already mentioned it when we talked about Ginichiro and remnants, but he has a bowstring kanji in his name, again. When he's in the way of Tamoe mode, you can see that his right arm and the right side of his body are burned and have the tree-like black pattern. Since he's right-handed and catches lightning with his sword in the right hand, the lightning travels on that side, so it's more burnt, although his left forearm also bears the same marks. The art book depicts Kenichiro in his way of Tamoe form already with Kaimon, the Black Mortal Blade, but during our first encounter he has a normal katana sword. I find it incredibly funny that Genshiro doesn't use Ashina arts at all, despite being Ishin's protege. Instead, he uses a bunch of Okami arts, including their gravity-defying bow attacks and the floating passage. Well, while he was being trained by Tamoe, Ishin was making an Ashina lead out of Emma, so it's all fair. This is what I mean by saying that Genichiro's design is getting better the further you progress in the game. At this point, you just don't get it. He looks weird, has this giant bow that no one else seems to use, and wields lightning. And then you learn about Tamoe and her lightning, and then you get to the Fountain Hat Palace, and it all becomes clear. Just like Emma, he has an insane early concept art that didn't make it into the game, but it is one of the most shiver-inducing spreads in the art book. He wears a purple cloak, half of his face bears a white mark of immortality, and he wields Shishto, a seven-branched sword that Sakura Dragon wields in the game, covered in blood. I wonder what the thought behind it was on those earliest stages of production. Kuro's room is one of the most unfortunate slips on the part of the English localization. It honestly breaks my heart. Its original name is Tenshu Jodan Mikonoma, Tenshu Upper Section Miko's or Divine Heir's room. This is not Kuro's room specifically, but the room reserved for Dragon Heirs. Previously, this room belonged to Takeru and possibly to another Dragon Heir before him. Kuro mentions it in one of the dialogues that this room was previously Takeru's, so it kind of remedies the situation, but I really wish the localization went out of their way to preserve the original name. In the Dragon Heir's room, we find Koro, an incense burner that Takeru used to burn parts of the Ever Blossom as, well, incense. It still retains the faint aroma that Wolf recognizes as nostalgic. Later, we'll learn that he felt it from his foster father, who plucked the original branch of the Ever Blossom and carried it with him for years. There is also a small Shinto shrine called Hokora, which is kind of curious because Hokora shrines are traditionally either parts of bigger shrines or small wayside shrines that house kami that protect travelers. Hokora shrine is not really supposed to be inside. However, Hokora is one of the most ancient words for shrine, and it is believed that first Hokora shrines housed Yorishiro. We discussed Yorishiro multiple times throughout the project. It is basically some type of physical object that is supposed to attract kami. This is also backed by the fact that the shrine is tied by Shimenawa rope with shide, lightning-shaped paper streamers, and the whole thing is supposed to ward off evil spirits. So chances are this Hokora shrine is ancient, and it likely houses some type of object that is supposed to attract kami. This Hokora shrine is remarkable in more than one way, though. It has the same carving style and pattern as the houses in the Fountainhead Palace, it has the exact same sakura and lotus motifs as the engravings from the palace. Maybe that is why this Hokora shrine is inside the castle. It was not built here, but brought here. Let's visit Ishin, shall we? His room is called Ishin no Hanare, where Hanare denotes a room detached from the main house or a solitary room. The art book depicts Wolf entering Ishin's room as he lies on the floor sick and Emma is taking care of him. Quite a touching scene, actually. Let's not forget that Ishin is also the Tengu of Ashina. At some point you can see his Tengu outfit hanging inconspicuously on the wall just behind the folding screen. If you don't do the Tengu quest before reuniting with Emma in the Ashina castle, you'll find Ishin's note in his room instead of Ishin himself. The note's original name is Ishin no Kitegami, a letter left behind by Ishin who has departed. This is the letter that Ishin left in his Hanare no Yagora, solitary watchtower. It reads, Emma, there is some noise around the front castle gate. Tengu will see to the rats. 
worry not, Ishin. We know that the Tengu of Ashina is Ishin himself, which begs the question, why Tengu? To be honest, this is not a question I really pondered while playing through the game for the first time. It's Japan, Tengu just makes sense. But as I started to research how the world of Sekiro is built and why some things were chosen over other things, I could not help but wonder why Tengu? Japanese legendarium is so incredibly vast, Ishin could have been whatever creature, and yet he is Tengu. Tengu have been around for centuries, and because of that they have amassed a great deal of imagery, legends, descriptions, and details that are often opposite in nature. Tengu are described as both good and bad, as proficient in martial arts and outright stupid, as mischievous and benevolent, as mountain gods and simply yokai tricksters. Every hundred years or so the myths seemed to change course, and Buddhism was partially responsible for that. Initially, Tengu had human, monkey, and avian characteristics, but over time Tengu evolved to be more human and less animal. The image we refer to today is the big red nose, which is a transformed beak, feather cloak, and wings, and generally anthropomorphic figure. This is the image of a Daitengu, who can be the leader of a group of Kotengu, smaller Tengu, that often take forms of smaller birds of prey. This little detail plays really nicely with the Naijar who serve Ishin. Even though the Naijars are not really birds of prey, these shinobi also wear masks with long beak noses, so having a Daitengu Ishin in the picture just makes sense. Another signature Tengu trait that is important in the context of Sekiro is that for the longest time Tengu were viewed as sworn enemies of Buddhism. They would enact all kinds of mischief trying to lure monks off the path to enlightenment. They would kidnap monks and randomly drop them in the deep woods. They would possess women and try to seduce the monks, or just straight up conjure visions of Buddha to confuse them. Given the Shin's exceptional dislike for the monks of Senpo Temple and their shinobi, I think it makes the most sense that his alter ego is Tengu. Traditionally, Tengu are also considered to be proud and arrogant. In one of the branches of Tengu mythos, they were the spirits of people who were arrogant in life. Let me know if you think this detail fits with the Shin or not. Lastly, as the Tengu myth aged, they became known for their immense strength, exceptional swordsmanship, and proficiency in martial arts, just around the time when Sekiro takes place. The famous Kurama Tengu was said to have taught Minamoto no Yoshitsune the skill of swordsmanship. This is probably the most important Tengu trait that we can attribute to Ishin's choice of his alter ego. In time, the image of Tengu and their goals grew well past being tricksters messing with Buddhist monks. They became associated with war, swordsmanship, martial arts, and appeared to have more things to do other than antagonize Buddhists. However, one of the details that survived through centuries is that whatever noise you hear in the forest or on the mountain is surely made by Tengu. If you hear weird music or trees making sounds or stones rolling down the mountainside, it is bound to be the Tengu's doing. They just make a bunch of noises to scare people and make fun of them. In Japanese, there is a whole group of words that describe Tengu-made noises you can hear when taking a walk in the woods or climbing a mountain. I hope you enjoyed this little digression. Moving on. The place where we find Sabimaru and eel liver is marked in the art book as Tenshu Irikuchi, Tenshu Entrance. There we can see Ashina Gusoku, suit of armor. The art book also depicts a Fusuma handle or Fusuma knob adorned with Ashina iris. Deer antlers, tied together and lying around either by themselves or placed in pots, are also in the art book, quite straightforwardly marked as Shikotsuno, deer antlers. To me, they seemed like utility objects, but I could not figure out for what they could have been used. If you have some ideas, please share them in the comments. Technically, the events of the game take place in late autumn, which is the season for cutting deer antlers, or they might shed their antlers in December themselves. Deer are sacred animals in Japan and have been for centuries. Deer antlers actually fit pretty well with the general theme of Sekiro. Since deer shed their antlers and then grow them back, these animals, and their antlers in particular, are the symbols of death and rebirth. The giant, well-like atrium that you enter when going deeper into the Tenshu is called Tenshu Fukinuke, Tenshu Hall or Tenshu Atrium. Before we discuss Old Grave Sculptor's idol, I'd be amiss not to mention a single shinobi hunter patrolling the yard just before the idol. All shinobi hunters are called shinobi kari, shinobi hunters, and the art book depicts the shinobi hunter mini-boss from the Harada estate as the archetypical one. 
All other shinobi hunters have, I think, the same character model as him, but might be dressed differently, and they also lack the white headpiece that the miniboss wears. This shinobi hunter is a funny character, you can eavesdrop on him after the final invasion and hear him mumbling about the conflict with Interior Ministry and whether or not he would get paid for his services now. Honestly, Old Grave is kind of a weird name when you think about it. It's not a single grave, but at least two, or rather three, if you count the Everblossom. And these graves are not actually old at all. They're only a couple decades old, if that. In Japanese, this idol is called Nagoribaka, which consists of Nagori, relics, remains, and also the sorrow of parting, and Haka, grave. Nagori is a very Takeru word. It is present in the description of the aromatic flower, the Keru took a sakura branch from the divine realm as a nagori, a parting relic. Do you think their actual bodies were buried here, or these are just tombstones to honor them? In the art book, this site is called Takeru to Tomoe no Haka, Takeru and Tomoe's graves. We've been here multiple times throughout the project, it is one of the saddest places in the game. Tomoe's gravestone is bigger and it has the kanji Tomoe engraved on it. Takeru's gravestone is smaller, hinting at the fact that he was a child, just like Kuro. There are three pink sakura petals offered to Tomoe's grave. Everblossom's remains are also interesting. You can see a Shimenawa rope going around the fence to keep evil spirits at bay, even now. The art book doesn't really have much to say on the Shirohebi no Yashiro, White Serpent Shrine. This is a shrine dedicated to the White Serpent Nushi, whom we discussed in detail in one of the previous videos. The art book depicts exterior of the front shrine, or hall of worship, and the interior of the inner sanctuary, where we can meet Tengu, who killed the ministry agent. We've covered most of the Ashina Reservoir in the last video. Let's look at some mini-bosses that we can encounter in Ashina Castle before the invasion. We won't talk about the abandoned dungeon at this time, it will have its own video, because there is a bunch of related nodes we need to go through. This guy guards the Moonview Tower. In the art book, there is one archetypical image of a Seven Spear warrior with a very special Ashina Iris headpiece, that sets them apart from samurai generals. Their spears have only one horn. The original name of Seven Spears is Ashina no Nanahon Yari, Ashina Seven Spears. This particular boss's name is Yamauchi Shikubuto Shikatsu. As usual, a bunch of reading options here, but we'll leave it as it is. I wonder if he's related to samurai general Yamauchi Tenzen, whom we encounter in the Ashina outskirts. Oh, about him. On his back, Yamuch Tenzen has a Hirata sigil on top of another sigil, and that original one is a sigil of the Toyotomi clan. Let's see what the final prayer necklace has to say about Ashina Seven Spears. Duzen no Nenju, final prayer necklace. The word Duzen generally denotes something complete, whole, so it also tells us that there are no more necklaces after this. It also has a Ju kanji meaning ten. In general, the localization is on point, Seven Spears were vital in the Shins stealing the country war, and he entrusted only his most loyal samurai with spears. The last line is much more poetic in Japanese. However, now, only a few spearheads remain. Now let's discuss a lone shadow that we can encounter while in Ashina Castle before the invasion. In Japanese, all lone shadows are called koeishu, where koe means lonely figure, someone who is on their own, and Shu points at the fact that there is a group of these people, much like the Naijar are called Yotakashu, Naijar clan. Their original names are really curious because they're all kind of metaphorical. This guy at the bottom of the well in Ashina Reservoir is called Tachiashi, where Tachi is, well, Tachi, a type of long sword, and Ashi means leg. So this one is lone figure Tachi leg, which sounds ridiculous but kinda cool. The English localization honestly had no choice but to localize him as long swordsman, even though he doesn't wield a long touchy sword. I bet they didn't even see what he looks like. He uses his leg as a long touchy sword, and that's what the metaphor is all about. Hachino Nenju, eighth prayer necklace. The localization is pretty accurate. For poison, the original uses Dokshu, literally poisonous hand, the name of Lone Shadow Vile Hand, but also a dirty or underhanded trick, which fits really nicely here. They each have a secret art or a technique they are proficient in. Seventeen born? We got absolutely robbed. I would love to fight more Lone Shadows, they are among my favorite mini-bosses. For a while, I thought that they had only one arm, that is why they are using their legs to fight, but later I noticed that they have both arms, it's just that their purple cloaks kind of hide one. 
The art book has an archetypical lone shadow depicted, and there is nothing really special that we do not know already. Purple cloaks pointing at the fact that they serve the interior ministry that could afford garments of such color, a bunch of kunai strapped to their legs, and even a chain with a hook hidden under the cloak. The art book also depicts a shinobi hound, Ninken. My super theory is that Lady Butterfly assisted the interior ministry in lone shadows training because their leg fighting styles are way too similar to be a coincidence. That was a lengthy one, so much to see in the Eshna castle. Next up, Hirata estate. Probably a much shorter visit, but still a bunch of things to discuss. Feels great to be back. Don't forget to check the description for a lot links and more reading. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.